So welcome, 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 welcome. This is Sienna Lea of Rise Multiversity, and I am here with Laura yeah. Lee of Mystic House. And uh, w- the, uh, the theme of these podcasts are, and the truth will make you laugh. Because I know a lot of, yeah, and so Laura Lee, thanks for being here today. You got all snowed in up there in Washington. I'm in Ecuador and it's freezing and raining and they're shut down the roads and the, the, the IMF bank is once their loan money and uh, the, the Ecuador is going through a huge crisis. So I'm here. And well, you here. left you a few weeks ago, like a month ago. It was like summer. Now what's going on over there? Oh, I know. Yeah, we're supposed to have really cold um, nights the next few nights. But, yeah. Other well, than that, life is good. <laughs> anyway, uh, we are absolutely intending to laugh every chance we get because laughter is one of the greatest medicines we have. And if things, uh, I don't know how much more screwed up anything could be, but you know, it's either slit or wrist time or start laughing a lot. That's right. Uh, Laura Lee and I have taken a, (laughs) what? (laughs) I offer option number two. (laughs) Right on. And Laura Lee, you're so great at that. I mean, I've seen you go wrestle down some pretty nasty <laughs> black magicians with a laughing the whole way. Laughing They're all the way. <laughs> laughing all the way. So we're going to laugh on this podcast series. Laura Lee and I are joining forces. We're going to be doing some joint sessions and group work and uh, retreat work. Uh, and it's going to be about getting real with magic and with shadow and with interference and what's really going on and stopping thinking that we don't have the power to uh, turn this around. We got to get real people. We got to look at real and see what power we gave away to who and to what and how we get it back like yesterday. And uh, so our podcast may piss you off. Uh, you may feel a strong urge to turn us off <laughs> to get the heck out of here as quick as you know how. And I just, just really urge you not to listen to that because this is going to be um, probably a kind of a ghost busting, curse busting session. We're, hopefully when we're done here, your brains are going to be like glued on backwards because they're already backwards and that's the problem. So we're going to get them glued on frontwards. We're going to talk about magic. We're going to talk about witches. And uh, I'm here with a witch, okay? So we're getting it from the witch's, you don't say the horse's mouth. What do you say with a witch? The witch's broomstick. We're getting it from the witch's broomstick. Laura Lee Mystic, how did you end up becoming a witch? Let well here. All right, well, first of all, I want to say why I even want to bother with this topic at all, because I am pretty well convinced now that this entire matrix, the control grid, the way everything operates from politics to uh, big pharma to the military, you know, the wars, the money, the everything, the psychology, the way we do everything, it's all black magic. It's all run by Satanists. And to say that we don't want any part of magic because you guys are so bad is like we might as well just bend over and let them have their way with us for another century. Yeah. Would you agree with that? <laughs> um, first of all, I've got to show everybody, this is, this is a t-shirt my daughter gave to me. Which is famous. <laughs> now this part is absolutely true. This part, uh-uh, that's, <laughs> that one's a joke. But, <laughs> so I just wanted you to see that because you can see the top part. You got to see the rest. So um, yeah, this, uh, this magic thing, if we don't start getting real serious and real about learning magic ourselves, we are screwed like that. So what you said is absolutely true. Everybody else is doing it. If we don't get our piece of the action and we don't start um, getting adept at it, um, you're like you said, we might as well curl up and die because uh, we're going to get run over. We're going to buy a steamroller. <laughs> 
I never get up. <laughs> we are being, right? So Absolutely. for the first, the first little exorcism we can have here today, Kimmy, <laughs> is let's get over our freak out about magic. So, yeah. uh, and you, you know how to screen share, right, Laura? You want to put up your thing about, should we get down to the basics now? And I mean, Laura Lee, I've been in, doing shadow work for 40 years. You've been doing ghost busting and magic and a lot of other stuff. And that's up to you. You won't even tell people what you're doing or not doing at what level you're doing it, but you're doing it probably better and more than most anybody I've seen so far who says they're doing it in terms of <laughs> using alchemy, <laughs> stolen alchemy to bring in everything that's been stolen, robbed, raped, oppressed, tortured, and tormented out of the human psyche. Um, and uh, it blew my mind. You know, I, was, I was with Laura Lee for four months and blew my mind see how she, the kind of warrior she is. And it makes me want her warrior, her indigo warrior training information, you know, we're in the soup. She has her own work and her own thing in her own books. And she's coming out with a new one soon. And I've been doing my shadow, but there's, there's so many, they're, they're interlocking agendas. They, it all needs to be purged like a demon from our psyches because I've found out in the, you know, now more than ever that most of our shadows are infected with what Laura Lee calls cryptos and these gangsters and shove ins and assholes and shove ons. And that a lot of what we think is the enemy out there is the enemy in here. They've taken over our subpersonalities, they've taken over our egos, they've taken over our chakras, our Kundalini, our astral bodies. We're like coded in this crap and thinking it's us and feeling bad about it and thinking we need to do something and that we created all of this. So let's break this down, Laura Lee. Let's, what is magic? This, this is a good place to begin because, um, you know, a lot of people don't like really know what it is. And, no. um, and why are you spelling it that weird way? Um, because that is the old way and um, it's like the original way. And before it was corrupted, that's the way it was spelled. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and the bottom line, it is the ability to create and make outcomes you desire. And that, you know, that's what everybody wants. That, you know, that's what all of the um, change your mind, change your life kind of motivation things. Yeah, it's huge not- Huge business. Everyone's running around trying to find that soulmate, trying to lose those 20 pounds and trying to get rich. And how does that work for y'all? Because I've been in the <laughs> for 40 years and most of you are as broke as the day you brought me to that goddess workshop to sign up under you and uh, use those wonderful principles of the secret to get rich and famous. Exactly. The thing is, it that can work, and it can work good if it's not being interfered with. And that's the problem, is that nice people get their change your mind, change your life, work, it, they come in and mess it up. But if you're an asshole, then yeah, yeah, go ahead, let them be rich. Let them be rich and famous like my shirt. <laughs> All right. So let me make sure that uh, I'm getting what you're saying there. First of all, you use the, the phrase that you've coined with Hale, uh, who you're working with and the spiritual realm, asshole. So what are, who are these assholes and why does magic work for them and not for me? Oh. <laughs> That's what I want to know right you now. Have to be an asshole for it to work well. <laughs> oh well, that's the oh. dubious honor, honor award, the booby prize. I know, I know. Gosh, okay. you mean I'm not an asshole? Well, no, you couldn't be. <laughs> um, what, what, what we need to do first is is what's on here. We need to look at the original version or rules, and which was using the benevolent powers within you 
to create or cause a desired effect through the collaboration of natural laws. This includes the law of code, which is the writing and rewriting of the code for this hologram, also known as our holographic universe. This can be amplified by collaborating with other magic mag magicians. So that's the original. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, and you scroll down on that, on your, there we go. Oh, a little too far, a little too far. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's how it should have been, and that's how it used to be. But then everything got corrupted when the D monster came in and took over the hologram. And you may need to explain the D monster. Okay, well, haven't we haven't we talked about her on other ones? I I just assume everybody's <laughs> everybody's. Yeah, well, I know you you're working with people who are way down this rabbit hole, uh, and those may not be the people listening today. Okay, up to you, up to you. Okay. You can pick in okay. other places. Um, I, I call her the D monster because. I don't like to say her name, so I'll say her name once. Her name was Durerla, and she is responsible for this hologram getting corrupted beyond measure, beyond imagination. So and I know already we may have, uh, you know, blown everyone out of the water. Everyone likes has their favorite demon, and they don't want you to... <laughs> that the demon that the was away. creating all this hell was somebody else. They're all in it together, the reptiles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, They're yeah. all in Absolutely. it together. And, yes, there was a dark femme at the top of the, the patriarchal uh, control mm -hmm. grid. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of these scenarios, for those of you who are truthers and researchers, are very parallel to Lorley's information in terms of this reality becoming a prison planet and being in lockdown and us being used as food sources for non-sourced beings that needed our energy to parasite off of and the entire situation has been repurposed reformatted and restructured so for food for these starving uh beings that in their world we are simply food so the, the whole notion that we have that I mean, this was obviously not why this realm was created originally, but it got taken over and co-opted. And uh, the work that I've been doing is the work of, of returning to our original design and purging and removing these distortions, impositions, and uh, 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 curses and uh, black magic spells and uh, very distorted and corrupted uh, uh, layers and layers that are all layered into our own psyches and that, you know, you know, we have hearts, we want a good world, we want a good life. And yet we're completely com polluted by this black magic. And then we're mind controlled to think all magic is bad. So we'll stay there forever and never figure out how this happened to us and never cultivate the magical tools and skills we need to get out of this. So I just want to be really clear about how important it is. And this work that Laura Lee and I are collaborating on is, is a hands-on work for you. It's not just talking about Dracos and reptiles and, and how evil everything is, because I think we've all been staring at it now for quite a long time. But what do we do to unearth this within ourselves, to clean it up in here, and to actually have the power to do something other than to keep perpetuating this current state of affairs. So I just wanted to Very good. Good rant on about yeah, that. What? Yeah, absolutely. Good background. I'm, I'm every, okay. Yep. All right. Okay. I I'm glad. Agree. <laughs> all right. All right. I did not want to be blabbing so much. I want to go back to this corrupted magic thing. Okay. So, um, this cor the corrupted rules are what we have been dealing with. And the joke on us is that we didn't know about it. Okay. So number one is what you put out comes back times three, but that can be reversed and manipulated if you know how. So that totally screws over how karma should have been. Okay. This negates karma. 
it's like, okay, yeah, people get karma unless you know how to go under the go under the table on that one. And then and then you don't get it. Okay, number two, the more corrupted you are, the better magic works. And the more corrupted the wish, the quicker it manifests. Yeah, brother. Okay. So so yeah, so isn't that kind of what's going on with with how this planet is being manipulated? The more corrupted, the better it works. Yeah. Now I've got here, hence why we use a skank culture to outwit corruption. And that that is outlined in cryogenetics book one on how to how to set one of those up. So um and, and it's cryogenetics. Now, is that written in here anywhere? Because I know I spelled it wrong for a while. K R Y A H G E N E T I C S. Cryogenetics. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Laura Lee Mystica. By Laura Lee Mystica. Yes. So this is outlining some truths that seem so basic that it's a no-brainer, but this is so eluded humanity, and it is so at the at the meat, at the at the crossroad, at the very point of urgency to understand and, this. And um, scroll down a little bit more. Right. I think some of you will feel, well, no wonders. I have been trying so hard for years. You know, and nothing's happening, and, and why, why does it work for so-and-so, and it's not working for me? There must be something wrong with me. Well, it's not right. what's wrong with you. It's what's right with you, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you now, if you've been working on this, you know, I used to sell Success Motivation Institute back in the 70s, okay? I've been working on this for decades, and just getting smacked and smacked and smacked and homeless and smacked and homeless and smacked. And the list goes on and on. It's been like hideous. And I thought, why don't these rules work for me? They work for everybody else. Okay. Well, here's why this is why. Okay. Now corrupted magic works better for selfish personal gain, especially if you hurt others because of it. Okay. So wow. nice people that, you know, they wouldn't want to have anything to do with that. Okay. So that, that kicks you out of the bulk part too. Corrupted magic and spells come with a high price, but only for benevolent people. And sometimes they get the opposite of what they ask for. It's a crapshoot. I know for a fact that that happened to me. I would always get the opposite of what I asked for. Um, it, I, I got lists and lists of things that that I I got the opposite for. And one time when I was I was homeless and I was like down in the dirt, and I'm like, what what does it matter? Maybe everything is so backwards that I have to ask for what I don't want, and then I'll get it. So that made sense to me. Well, so I did that, and guess what? I got what I asked for. Something crappy. <laughs> So um, I thought, okay, um, damned if I do, damned if I don't, where do I go from here? Well, sheer, sheer will got me through all that crap. And Hal helped me too, because I couldn't have uh, gotten through it without him. And I just want you to know that whatever you're going through, you can get through it and you can come out on top. If I did it, you can. Okay. I just want you to know that. Okay, because no, you're no. no longer harmless, right? I'm no longer homeless. I live in an enchanted forest with my my chickens and ducks and my little rescue farm. I live the dream. Um, I still don't have the rich part down, but I have I have what I need to do my work, and um, I I somehow actually. What I've got now was created through the skank altar. And I just tell us about, are you gonna tell us how to do a skank altar? <laughs> that would be a good magical. Let's do a skank altar podcast. Okay, we'll, we'll do we'll come do back that. and we'll but put I, it in the membership section. We will do that. Skank altar 101. We will do that. Okay. 
All right. um, you just need to know that that when you do the skin culture, you only get one time. I didn't know this till just recently. You only get one skin culture, one time, and then it doesn't work anymore. But if that gets you to a new level and gets you back on your feet again, that's good. Then you can try other forms of magic and not really using the skin culture. But yeah, we will we will have a podcast on that. That'll be great. Um, okay, so number five, nice people innocently use magic through their words and emotions. And 90% of the time, it has a bad outcome. Corrupted magic picks and chooses what it manifests and the wealthy get the first pick. For the rest of the people, even nice words and emotions can get twisted and turn into bad, out bad and misunderstood. So what this is saying is that when you get angry or something and, and blurt something out, that's magic. You just performed a magical spell, whether you know it or not. Now, the thing is, if you... If you said something like, oh, I hate my hair. I wish it would all fall out. That could happen because of this dark magic crap. And and so it, it's not that your words always create your reality because they don't. They only create your reality with these rules of magic. Okay? They can, but they don't always do it because we're under this spell of this corrupted magic okay is that making sense (laughs) yeah Um, yeah but it just makes me want to ask the question all right so how do we break this but okay go ahead go ahead let's well we're we're getting there okay so using corrupted magic which is energy and magnetics you can force your will or desired outcome on other people animals plants insects and things or events and even gain power or possession by a stealing energy and life force from others. This includes blood rituals. B enslaving and torturing others to use and consume their intense extreme loosh and pheromones, which creates powerful conductivity and amplification of your own will and desired outcomes. And C rewriting code into the hologram for personal gain and power or forcing the code writers to do it for you. This is how they have been using and abusing and duping us. This is it. This is the bottom line. And if you don't get it, you're never going to understand it. If you don't get these rules, nothing makes sense. Once you get it, once you see these rules, you go, well, of course, that's been happening to me. I get it. Yeah. Okay, so on to the next thing. How do we change this? Um, when you um, when you're doing authentic magic, I would suggest strongly suggest that you use the cryogenetics egg as a safe haven for doing any kind of magic. I would never think of doing anything where I wasn't under the protection of this etheric cryogenetics egg, um, helping me and having my back. And, you know, if if I said something a little wrong or it it would remind me, okay, you can't do it that way. The cryogenetics egg is our reply to their corrupted magic. The egg will help you get through this. And the egg will only work for truth and justice, right? Right. That's right. That's right. If you're an asshole, the egg isn't going to work for you. In fact, it will probably bring truth and justice on you, which, oh, well, good. Good for that. Um, so, okay. And we have, so then we're going to have more podcasts about the eggs. That's a whole other topic, how they came in with these rocks uh, and uh, how they're being used. And I know that already people get triggered. Oh, because uh, there's a lot of overlays in the uh, curses that have been put on your mind to make you run as far as you can from this thing. Because why? Because it has the potency to break these curses. And so uh, just like all the magic that's real, it's got a bad reputation. But I'm here to tell you, 
that these things are powerful allies. And if you don't think you need any friends going through what we're going through on this planet right now, well, good luck to you for that. Yeah. I'm losing my best friends. These are my best dudes. Um, okay. So then you have to cancel or take to zero and override all the corrupted imposed rules that have been projected on you and you've been subjected to. So you have to start sifting out all of the crap that you have on you um, that magic has done to you and override that, bring it to zero. That's your first step. And, and we'll, we'll talk more about how to do that. There's a, a many, many ways some ways are way more efficient than others, and, and so we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, operating from purity, love, integrity, and honor, honor when creating with magic. Energy can be calm and serene or extremely confident, forceful, and passionate. So you can do magic by going into Zen, or you can do magic by putting a powerful energy force out there. Both have their 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 um, their positions, and both can be used in different circumstances. So, this these are two of the ways that you can use your energy to start causing change. Um, okay, number- anybody do this? I mean, obviously, there are more powerful and less powerful witches and warlocks out there. I mean, is it going to be that when people start cleaning themselves up? and are no longer just like uh, programmed programs running on programs, but they're actually embodying some real authentic life force. The real juju, the thing that, that the women have been demonized forever is the real juice, the power. Um, but then we've given that power away for so long. Can we get it back? Yes, yes. And in the beginning, you know, it's like you, you got to oil the gears. It may take, you know, two or three of these to start getting the, the machine going. But the more you do it, the better you get, the better you get, the more you do it. And it's just kind of a process. I didn't get where I'm at overnight. I tell you what, it, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> but some people, and probably many of the ones that are watching this, have natural innate abilities and they go, oh yeah, I get this, bam, they got it. And, and it's, it's working for them. So this could absolutely happen to you. Um, now, number three is um, manifesting with magic as long as you do not operate out of ego, align with greater good, truth and justice. Operate from win-win, not win-lose attitude. If you if you are are in that mindset and in that energetic, the egg and the rocks will absolutely have your back, absolutely. But if you start getting into ego and blah blah blah, you're on the other team, and yeah, good luck with that. Um, and number four, remember. And this is very important. Magic corrupted this hologram and magic can eliminate that, that corruption. And I'm, I'm telling you now, nothing but magic will eliminate this corruption. Okay? It just won't. That's just how it works. So we so best be getting our magic fingers going and our, our magic antennas up because if we don't, and we don't understand it, we're not going to have a chance to eliminate this corruption here. So you don't, uh, so going out on the streets and screaming and writing and hating Trump or loving Trump or being gay or being a transgender or being green or believing in global warming or that's not going to change it? Um. I think it's important to um, blow the whistle on corruption when you see it, um, to, to stand up for, for truth and justice. Yes, that can help, 
but the and, and I, I see what you're saying. It's like we've got all of these conflicting um, agendas going on, and they are so conflicting, and they are such agendas. What we need to do is get back to the truth, back to back to the point of authentic truth because until we do that we're just playing the game we're just playing into their hands you know well, yeah. uh, the idea of truth shall make you free yes but it can also um get you kicked to the curb yes but that's what we came here for i've been kicked to the curb you've been kicked to the curb we just get back up and we we keep going on so yes, it's important to be advocates for the underdog, whether it's it's farmed animals or children that are being uh, abused in in by priests and and whatnot. It, it's like yes, we need to stand up for that stuff, but then we have to go to the the bottom line, which is magic. Magic is what got all this corruption going on in the first place. Magic is what is corrupting the, the corporate machine. And we, we, gotta, we gotta get in there and get our hands on that and, and turn this thing around or it will just continue and get worse and worse and worse. As it is. So, yeah. and then from my 40 years working with people's shadows, I can say that this corrupted programming most people think it's just themselves it's how they think and how they feel and the way things are it's become so much a part of our psychological structure that we think it's the truth and that's what somehow i've been led i mean i'm not the only person by any means to to look at this shadow stuff because i just knew like you always say look something just ain't right just something <laughs> is so not right with uh, the way everything is, you know, you see these decent people, they're Christians and they, and then you see these people and they don't, you know, global warming and they, you see people that are so angry and they're so hurt and they're so want to do good. They so want to be good people and they're nuts. They're, they're robotic programs that are uh, mind controlled through curses and magic to be fulfilling the agenda of the black magicians and they will fight. They will kill you. They will beat you up. They'll do any, it's amazing. If you don't take Jesus into your heart just right now, if you don't believe in Islam, if you don't, whatever we've been trauma based mind controlled in this state of horrific torture and pain, we've been forced to believe lies and black magic and perpetrate perpetuate their lies in a world and that makes us feel good for a few minutes till we have to go back out there and beat the drum again and we're just <laughs> trying desperately to feel good because we feel so horrible in this horrible sick toxic soup that we're becoming that we become so yeah i agree that there's got to be some way to break these curses and to start seeing from the internal eye that gets uncalcified and uncorrupted and unimplanted and, uh, and long enough that we can actually see the difference between uh, a beautiful, pure, uncorrupted heart that wants to do good and is coming from that place and someone who thinks they're that and they are just the opposite, which is almost everybody. So how do you break that curse? How do we get to the place where we realize, oh my gosh, it's me. It's not just out there. It's not Donald Trump. I'm that. He's mirroring something in me. I so hate that I want to kill him. And because it's, I don't see anything changing other than getting uh, more and more absorbed into the black magic curse hive mind uh, AI takeover uh, because it hurts less. It hurts less to follow the party line because then you don't have to feel the real soul pain of selling out to Satan, which is what you're doing every minute that you're going along with a system that is based on cruelty. So, uh, 
I, you know, I, I feel that you really have some, I mean, you have such a simple way of speaking and you always make it seem like what you say, oh, isn't that all that important or whatever, just because you're not very egoic. But I keep, I keep on wanting to bring you back and back and back and, sh and, and bring these specific tools with our courses and our private sessions with Rise Multiversity, where we're launching a whole new set of this around the integrating magic and shadow and all of these different perspectives, the eggs and, uh, and working in community and working in groups and really waking the fuck up and getting out of this. So, Yeah. Uh, I don't so know where we. It's a process, and um, it's everybody's journey is a little different. Um, I think in in our future um, videos we'll have more um, hands-on listing of things. I mean, there's a huge list, and a lot of this information will be in my next book, Cryogenetics Two. And yeah, you start out by, by getting rid of your chakras. That's number one. Getting rid of the kundalini snake. That's another one. Getting rid of your astral body. That's a big one. That, that will improve your life like nothing else. Okay, you're going to say something? Well, just why do you have to get rid of all those things? I mean, that's... Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, why? Um, Okay, for one thing, uh, didn't we talk about this on one of our other podcasts? I thought. We well, you know, we are going to repeat material, but when oh. we have been trauma based mind controlled for decade upon decade as our ancestors, we may need to hear these things a few times oh. for them to think in. Okay, this is good. So, your chakra system is an imposed system that was never meant to be there. Um, we have actually a three-point system, the, the head, the heart, and the loins. And the authentic system runs energy from your heart to your head, back to your heart, down to your loins, up to the heart, and it's like in a figure eight. Emotion. You're saying that there's an authentic way that, that our healthy, loving lightful energy runs and this is not what's happening that they've been co-opted by some sort of implants that are harvesting software is it's, that right been, it, exactly because this this figure eight racetrack that goes on nothing nothing from your head everything that that you think goes to your heart and everything that you create with your loins comes to your heart. And it's all filtered through the heart. So it doesn't get wigged out and corrupted because everything always goes back to the heart for filtering and amplification. The heart is the one that's in charge. So the thoughts in your head, if it's creative thoughts before they can actually create to go down to your loins and create, it does it goes has to go through the heart and the energy from the loins has to go through the heart before it gets to your head so it's a perfect system so if we've got these chakras that are an imposed system that compartmentalize everything then energy does not flow this this way where it's all going through the heart and and external forces can come in and grab onto your head or Go down to your loins and suck out your your creative energy, and and it's all in perfect um, alignment for what they want. They can go to you know if they want um, intense feelings, they go to your gut. It's good for them. It works for them, and it works well. And to always have to be cleaning out your chakras, um, you, it, cleaning out your chakras just makes it easier for them. Okay, it's. You think you're doing a good thing by cleaning up your chakras. It just, you know, it just, they like it either way. They like it crappy or they like it clean. It just makes it easier for them. So, so that's kind of a, a catch 22. So if you get rid of that system, 
you know, it's interesting. The chakras go up, up your front and down your back and then out there. It's funny how some people brag about, well, I have 72 chakras. You know, they're out here. Well, good for you. That just means that you've got more, more people and more entities sucking on your energy. Yeah, well, I, I'd be all proud about that one. So taking out these chakras is, is vital and getting back to your system, back to, back to this core star. And your, your core star is big. It, it's like this. So it, it incorporates your heart and your, your gut. So you've got both of, both of those working together because it's right there with your heart and your gut. So all this energy has to go through your heart and your gut. And it's, it's like a perfect system. Who, 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 who would want to mess with that? Well, I know who would want to mess with it. <laughs> These dark lords that put our chakra systems on there. And it's interesting in the cryogenetics, it, it talks about this and it's like these these chakras are real and that's what people see uh, people that are psychic they do see these chakras systems and these these turning and spinning things that's what's there um, but that doesn't mean it should be there just because something's there doesn't mean that it's always been there and that it's um, it's it's the way it should be we need to question things, question everything. Um, I had been, you know, with the shoppers, I was kind of, um, no, whatever, I'd clean once in a while, but they just didn't do that much for me. And then um, there's an article on my website called The Secrets Behind the Chakras. And that, that blew, I tell you what, when I came out with that, I was, <laughs> I was, I was not the, um, not the uh, most popular person on the block because that just, just totally went against everyone in in the new age and the new thought community. I think that it I came was, out before a George and even Carla Fox. Oh, this, this came around. out in two thousand or, or nineteen. Let's see. 2006 so it's been out for like almost you know 14 15 years it's been out for a long time so um it's yeah i i would kind of push the envelope there and then some other people um like george and other people um it, you know it's like once you bust through uh a dam, then you make cracks so other people can get through. And I feel like what I was doing is busting through there. Another thing that I busted through was the um, awareness of AI controlling us. And that was back in, in 2006, too, when nobody hardly even knew what, what AI was. And um, the story is is in, in the cryogenics part one. But it, it was funny because I was at dinner with, um, with an indigo and he said, I get the feeling that you have something trying to shove into you. And we were eating and I'm like, okay, so what's your point? Something is always trying to shove into me. <laughs> this, is, this is just a, you know, this is just how, how things work for me. And, and so I kept eating, and he says, well, don't you want to know? And I'm like, oh, I haven't said So I put my fork down, and, and, <laughs> and I go into psychic mode, and I says, yeah, yeah, there's something trying to shove into me, and I start eating again. And he's like, well, don't you want to know who it is? And I'm like, oh, for Pete's sake, I'm hungry. Okay, whatever. So I put my fork down, <laughs> and... and I started tuning into it and, and understanding it. And then I started to laugh and I said, well, it's some kind of AI, but it's not being very successful in getting in. And, <laughs> and he said, well, don't you want to know more? And I'm like, you know what, let's just eat and we'll figure this out later. 
So then after doing more and more research about AI getting into you and controlling you, it all started making sense. And I started talking about this on radio shows and the first radio show I went on talking about this. And I thought this guy would be like totally open to this. Um, he was so not. He, <laughs> when we got off the, off the phone or when he got me off the phone, he said on the air, Oh my goodness, it, it's just crazy. To, it's creepy to think that there's people like her out there on the streets. <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> so, so yeah, I got the AI and that guy that gets yeah. trapped. <laughs> the little yeah. controller in his navigation That's panel right. was like, right. wait a minute, get rid of her. Get her off your radio show now. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty funny. Um, so, yeah, being, being the one that, that the weight breaker, which is what indigos are and what they do is, you know, you've got somebody first has to get in there and knock it open so other people can come in and keep, keep uh, bringing the momentum up. So, yeah, so the AI, that was my first uh, encounter with AI. And then, oh, my gosh, I was getting hit right and left. So... Yeah, so the AI, that was my first uh, encounter with AI. And then, oh my gosh, I was getting hit right and left. Wait a minute, let's talk about, all right, can we, wait one second.